Chemistry, the mole. <clears throat> the lesson plan for this video can be downloaded for print at wildgooseco.com. If you follow the chapter 11 chemistry, you'll be able to download it. The outline will look just exactly what I'm using in here. You can see the actual URL if you're interested. Download it at wildgooseco.com front slash chem tutor, front slash chem pages, front slash gc11.html. If you look at the mole, we've just spent a couple of videos talking about it on the same chapter. We went from moles to grams, <coughs> ultimately to number of particles. You remember that the molar mass is defined as the mass in grams of one mole of any substance. That includes chemical compounds as well. For example, what is the mass of carbon dioxide in atomic mass units? Well, we've labeled them like this, carbon oxygen, if you know that the formula for carbon dioxide is CO2, you have carbon 1 times 12.0 equals 12.0. Oxygen there 2 times 16.0 equals 32.0. Therefore, the mass in atomic mass units is 44.0 AMU. Well, if that's the case, now you do know that I got those numbers from the periodic table. You've been seeing me do this. Carbon has a mass of 12.01 atomic mass units. Oxygen has a mass of 16.00 atomic mass units. Therefore, the compound CO2 has a mass of 44.0 atomic mass units. <coughs> well, that same logic holds true in molar mass then. What is the mass of one mole of carbon dioxide? Well, in carbon-12, we used 12 grams per mole because its atomic mass was 12.0. We just grabbed 12.0 grams, figured out how many particles in it, and it had the Avogadro number of particles. So therefore, 44.0 grams of carbon dioxide would also have 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd particles in it. In other words, that is the mass of one mole of carbon dioxide. So what is the mass of one mole of water? We use the same logic. Water has a formula of H2O. <coughs> Therefore, we have two hydrogens. So it's 2 times 1.0 equals 2.0. Oxygen is 1 times 16.0 equals 16.0. Add those together, 18.0 AMU. But now we're going to label it, since it's with the mass of one mole, as grams per mole, like this. The abbreviation of mole, M-O-L, we just drop the E off of it. Now, if I look at it, then that becomes a ratio from the periodic table. I now have 18 grams is equivalent to one mole. One mole is the same as 6.02 times 20, 10 to 23rd particles. But when we're dealing with 18 grams, we're not dealing with one water molecule. We're dealing with 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd molecules in this case. We refer to these guys as representative particles, so we can talk about atoms and ions and molecules and formula units. So we just use the term particles. The units, grams per mole, not AMU referred to as the molar mass. Those are a couple of little hints that you've got to just keep in mind. If we want to calculate the mass in grams of a simple atom, <coughs> we can do that a little bit later on. <coughs> Excuse me, we're not going to do it during this video. So, determine the mass of three moles of iron oxide. Well, first thing we have to do is get the molar mass, that's the mass of one mole of iron two oxide. So you have to write its correct formula. Iron 2, Fe2+, plus, oxide, O2-, minus. therefore it has a chemical formula of FeO. And I'm not going to spend much energy working with writing chemical formulas. You should already be able to do that, or go back and watch my videos associated with them. So now if I want the molar mass of iron 2 oxide, I first have to get the molar mass of iron. It's 55.85. So Fe and O, as I've labeled them in the past, 1 times 55 point, what did I say it was again? 55.85 equals 55.85 grams per mole for the iron. 
iron oxygen also has 1 times 16.0 to two significant figures gives us 16.0 so you're going to add those together 0 0.8 5 11 so it's 71 0.85, and now we're going to label it as grams per mole. Okay? Now, if you've caught that, then, what is the mass of three moles of it from this problem? We're going to use that molar mass that we just uh, ran together here. Make sure you see that on your diagram, on your video. We're going to start with 3.0 moles of FeO. Now, we're going to go ahead and say, well, using our dimensional analysis, determine the mass. We're going for question mark grams. We now have the mass of one mole. One mole of FeO is equal to 71.9 grams to three significant figures, which is one more than we need here. And we're still good with that. So now you just go ahead and put that in your calculator. You're going to say three times... 71.9 and you end up with 215.7 so the two significant figures which you need right there you have 220 grams and there's our final answer moles cancelled out leaving us only in grams of FeO therefore our answer now what is the mass of 3.7 moles of methane? We're going to do the same thing. We're going to say carbon, 1 times 12.0 equals 12.0. Hydrogen, 4 times 1.01 .01 equals 4.04. More sig figs than I needed. 16.0 grams per mole is the molar mass of methane. You should be able to start getting them off the periodic table just that fast. So 3.7 moles of methane, CH4, coming in here and saying, well, one mole of methane, CH4, is equal to 16.0 grams, like that. So now we just take 16.0 it is a point if you can see it. 16 times 3.7 to two significant figures is going to give us 59 grams. Straightforward, whatever you start with here must go down in the denominator from our conversion factor, and that's what we call these equivalents. One mole of CH4 is equal to 16.0 grams of CH4. So those two things have to be equal in order to convert here. What would be the mass in grams of 12.5 moles of hydrogen sulfate? This one's a little more tricky. It is a bigger compound, but it's done exactly the same way. You take the 2 from the hydrogen, you take the 32 from the sulfur, and the 64 from the oxygen, and I'm just grabbing these numbers from the periodic table to get the molar mass of hydrogen sulfate. So we're going to go ahead and put this now then in that kind of an arrangement. H, S, O, 2.02. I'm doing this one now in my head. 31 point... Uh, I better double check my mass of sulfur. 32.1, sorry. 32.1. And oxygen, six times 16 times 4 is going to be 64.0. I add those together, ignoring the 0.02 because it's irrelevant here. 0.1, and that's... Uh, so you end up with 6, 8. So you end up with 98.1 grams per mole for this substance right here, H2SO4. So once I've got that, I start with my 12.5 moles of H2SO4. I'm going to put my molar mass now with the moles in the denominator. One mole of H2SO4 is equal to 98.1 grams H2SO4. So now they're in the numerators. The moles H2SO4 cancel, leaving us only in grams. So it becomes 12.5 times 98.1. The only unit left is in grams. So 
It's 1,226. I need three significant figures, so 1,230 grams of H2SO4. Now, 19.2 grams of sulfur dioxide would contain how many moles? Now we're in grams. We're going to flip the tables on that and go just exactly backwards on that. We've got to have sulfur dioxide, S and O. you got 1 times 32.1. Oxygen is 2 times 16.0. So you end up with 64.1 is the molar mass for sulfur dioxide. So we start with our 19.2 grams of SO2. Now we're going to put the grams in the denominator, and our equivalence is 64 grams per mole. If I put the unit there, it'd help, it'd help you. So we're going to put the 64 grams in the bottom because this is in grams here. So the grams of SO2 needs to be in the denominator, 64.1 grams. And the numerator is now one mole because it says how many moles we are going to moles. So now it's a division problem instead. So I would take 19.2 divided by 64.1, and I now end up with 0.2995, which is 0 0.30, 0 0.300 to 3 significant figures, moles of H2SO4. They're again relatively straightforward if you can do the dimensional analysis.